Greetings. Just wanting to dig into the great treasure chest of God's Word and find His wisdom for us, not just for today, but wisdom that will remain with us so that we'll become uh, light bearers and uh, the salt of the earth and the grace of God here on earth. Today we're almost at the end of Psalm 119. We're reading from verses 161 to 168, uh, concentrating on verse 162. I rejoice in your promise, like one who finds great spoil. Opening God's word is the discovery of a great treasure chest. Every promise in the chest is a precious jewel. We need to make the most of what we find. If you do not, if you do not appreciate and employ and activate the promises, then you will invariably end up burying your treasure. And many look at God's promises from a distance. They look at them abstractly and so they don't really get the point. When you have the treasure of God's word in your hand and you hold all the treasure of God's promises in your hand, you have to receive it as though you're receiving a calling. The calling is that of a gatekeeper. Just like a gatekeeper holds the keys that unlock the entrance to a facility, when you have the word of God in your hands, you hold the keys to, that facilitate the promises of God. And you have God's word, you have great spoil. Instead of calling you a gatekeeper, we could call you a promise keeper. You Will you keep the promises under lock and key or will you open the word to the storehouse of God's treasury? We know that God cannot lie. And therefore, we know that God keeps his promises. He is the promise keeper. But if you have God's word on something, you also become a promise keeper. The trouble is, most of us do not know the authority that God has given us to unlock his promises. A promise is never a one-way deal. It places a demand upon the one who made the promise, that's God, but it also asks something of the promise receiver. It asks that we be worthy recipients. You have to be committed to correctly handling the wealth that comes your way. A promise is more than a transaction of trust where you muster enough energy to believe what God says he's going to do. It's an invitation to be a worthy benefactor, or as Peter puts it, he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature. Peter is saying, in the process of giving you the promise, which in the framework of faith equates to you receiving the actual thing promised. In the process of God giving you the promise, you are changed into something capable of wielding the promises of God. So begin, <clears throat> begin by being a promise receiver and then grow into being a promise bearer until you advance in authority and like God, you become a promise keeper. If you won't grow, the riches and depths of God's promises will largely remain unavailable. They'll be uncharted territory. You'll look upon them across the landscape of the word of God, but you won't know how to get from here to there. 
Don't be satisfied with simply skimming the surface of God's word. God work, wants his word to grow in your heart like the pearl in the center of an oyster. Heavenly love and divine wisdom developing within you. If you give all your attention to God's word, then you'll know that Jesus spoke the truth when he said that faith as small as a mustard seed can move mountains. Until we realize this, we'll be viewing heaven from the outside instead of seeing it, instead of seeing it springing up within us. Until we realize this, we'll be viewing the promises of God from the outside as though they were locked up in some kind of promise box. This is where we fail. Once we're born again, heaven doesn't come into us from the outside. Once we're born again, the kingdom of God is within you. The promises of God do not come to us from the outside. Rather, they spring up within us according to our hearts and our will. Therefore, you don't need to run here and there saying, where is Christ? You don't need to say, who shall ascend to heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring Christ up again from the dead. But behold, the word of God is in your heart. The word is there within your heart. It's there as the bruiser of the serpent. It's there as a light unto your feet and a lamp unto your path. It's there as holy oil to soften and overcome the world. It's there as the speaking word of God in your soul. And as soon as you're ready to hear this eternal speaking word of God will speak wisdom and love in your inward parts and bring forth the birth of Christ with all of his holy nature and all of his inclinations. And then you will see the promises of God being unlocked and being uh, used and applied and employed within your life on your own behalf, but also on behalf of others in ways that you've never seen before. You'll unlock the treasury of God's word. And God's word will be to you like a great spoil. God bless you. We'll see you again tomorrow for some more wisdom from the word of God.